and welcome back to my garage. On the board today, we have right turn signals, we have left turn signals, and we have brake lights. But the important thing is, we are using single filament bulbs for the brake lights and the turn signals. That's right, two functions with one single filament bulb. You'll notice this stays on, but this one keeps blinking. And if we swap to the other side, it continues blinking even though we're using the brake lights. Pretty cool, right? Now, if you have ever tried to wire your brake lights and your turn signals into one single filament bulb like these, you'll know it can be pretty tricky. And that is because when you turn on your turn signal, these bulbs are actually getting a flashing 12 volts. But then when you turn on the brakes, this gets a full 12 volts all the time. And this one normally would get 12 volts, but you see it's not, it's still getting the flashing signal. And then if we flip to the opposite side, you can see the same thing. This is getting the full 12 volts now, but this one is still flashing. Now the first thing we need to do is actually go over the components here so you understand what we're working with, and then I'll show you how to actually wire it. We obviously have four bulbs. These are all 194 bulbs, but the bulb itself doesn't actually matter that much. The point here is that it's a single filament bulb, so it can only do one function, but we are actually telling it to do two functions through the use of some relays. Right here, we have the actual flasher. This is the thing that actually makes the lights pulse on and off. We have two distribution blocks here and here. This is the ground one, and this one is actually for the signal wire. And all these do is it just basically connects a whole bunch of wires together. So these are all ground wires. These are all wires pulsing lights. Now right here is your brake switch, and there's a bunch of different brake switches out there. This is the plunger style. These things normally go under your dashboard. They're found in just about every car in the 1980s and 90s. And then this is the kind of the older style brake switch, which is actually hydraulically activated and it plums right into your, um, your brake hydraulic circuit. So as you push down the brake pedal, the pressure inside the circuit builds up and it pushes the little switch inside here and it actually makes the connection between these. So these things actually do the exact same thing as this button. They're just, you know, different types of brake switches. Now this right here is the fuse block. We're only using three fuses in, in this circuit. So three of them are sitting unused. You can actually just use, you know, fused wires if that's what you want. Or if you already have some sort of bigger fuse box in your car and you want to connect into that, you can do that. But the moral is you just need power coming into some sort of fuse box or fused wires. And then the wires need to be fused going out to the rest of the circuits. We also have this switch right here. It's a three position switch. And that means that it can go to the one side and it stays latched. It can go in the middle and it does nothing at all. And then it can go to the other side and it also stays latched. It has three pins on the bottom. There's power going in the middle. And then when you flip it, power goes out one side. If you flip it the other way, power goes out the other side. Now these right here are all Bosch style five pin relays and there's four of them. We have one for the left front bulb, one for the left rear bulb, one for the right rear bulb, and one for the right front bulb. Now you may be wondering what these extra wires do here and why they're just stuck through the board doing nothing at all. And you know what? We'll talk about that in a few minutes. I'm just not ready to tell you yet. Now a five pin Bosch style relay has five pins on the bottom and each one is numbered. The top one is pin 87, the bottom one's pin 30, the left one is pin 86, and the right one is pin 85 with 87A in the middle. You may notice that those numbers correspond with these notes right here. So you can see pin 30 is blue, which you can see the blue wires here. And pin 87 is yellow. You can see the yellow wires here. So now you know which colors go with which pins on the bottoms of these relays. Okay, one more fun fact about relays. Like I said, this has got five pins but some have four pins on the bottom. Now this is a four pin Bosch style relay. It is numbered the same pins, but it is missing 87A in the center. So you see these red wires here? What we could do is we could actually put the four pin relay where these red wires are not being used. So I could use a four pin here, a five pin here, a five pin here, and a four pin here because 87A on both of these relays are not being used, and therefore, I could use a four pin relay. 
Now you may be asking, why am I not using four pin relays here and here? Why am I using five pin relays all across and then not hooking up these wires? And that's because I buy these relays by the box and you can turn a five pin relay into a four pin relay, but you can't turn a four pin relay into a five pin relay. So in my world, I like buying five pin relays and then if I don't need the 87A pin, I just won't hook it up. Sometimes I'll just remove the pin from the actual connector and you just turn a five pin relay into a four pin relay. Let's tuck these back in. Let's get into the details of the wiring because that's what you're here for. Let's start with the fuse box because that's where all the power begins. We have power coming in and it basically powers up all of this fuse box. But as I said, we're not using three of the circuits. We're only using these three. So right here, we have power coming in here and power going out to our flasher. And then power comes out of the flasher and goes to the distribution block. Now this whole block is just basically one big connection of wires. They're all connected to each other. So we have power coming in and then it's going out to each of these four wires, which if you come up here, you know, yellow is pin 87 on every one of these relays. So that's an input into the relays for pin 87. Now in this circuit, we are using pin 30 for each relay as an output to the bulbs. So you'll see this blue wire is the power output to this bulb. And then we have blue over here going to, the, to this bulb. We have blue coming down here, connecting to this one, and then blue here coming to this one. So that is pin 30, and that's the output going to the bulbs. So again, we have input right here with the flasher, and then output through the blue. Now we have the power going in and we have the power coming out to the bulbs, but we haven't turned the relays on to actually make that connection happen. So now we need to tell the relays to actually turn on and we do that with the switches. Now pin 85 coming out of the relays is the black ground wires. So all of them connect up to this distribution block and we have the ground wire coming in and it's grounding all of these. And then of course we have a ground for every single bulb as well. So all of these grounds all meet up here but you're actually going to not need a distribution block like this most likely because all of your grounds will most likely ground right to the chassis of the vehicle. They'll go to the frame or the body or whatever you happen to have as a common ground on your vehicle. Now, if you have a whole vehicle made out of fiberglass or something that doesn't have a common ground, then you would actually need a distribution block to connect all these wires to, and then you'd have to run the ground right back to the negative battery post. Now, pin 86 is the white wires, and the way that works is we have power coming in through the white wire to the center of the switch. And as you turn the switch on, it takes power from the center and it pushes it out one side. In this case, it goes through the two wires to pin 86 on the relay to the right rear and the right front of the turn signals. If you flop it the other way, we have power coming into the switch out this side to the left front and the left rear turn signals. And then of course in the middle, it's not doing anything at all. But as you can see, it's these white wires that are actually telling the relays to turn on and off. It's the combination of power going into 86 and ground being on pin 85. Those are the two wires that you need to connect to a relay to turn the relay on or off. Now, one thing I didn't mention on these white wires is that the two rights are tied together and the two lefts are actually tied together. So when you turn the switch on, you're actually telling both left relays to turn on or both right relays to turn on. And that's what's happening here. We have power coming in and then it's telling both lefts or both rights. Now this is all great. We have the turn signals, we have the left ones, we have the right ones, but we still need to hook up the brake lights. And that's actually really easy to connect, but actually making sense of it is where it gets a little complex. Let's connect it first and then we'll talk through it. Now the brake lights use pin 87A on these relays there's power coming in through the fuse box, through these red wires, into the brake switch, and in pin 87A of both of the rear light relays. The front ones are not being used at all. These are 87A on both front relays, but we're not using them at all. They're just not needed because you don't have brake lights in the front of your car. Now, one thing to note is that it is this switch which is turning on the relays. When I push this switch, it lights up the bulbs, but it's not actually activating the relays. It is just sending power in 87A and out pin 30. 
because that's the default position for a relay to be in. It is always connecting 87A to 30 unless you turn the relays on. As soon as you turn the relays on with this switch, then it disconnects 87A from 30 and it connects 87 to 30. And as we know, pin 87 is the yellow flasher wire. So when we have the brakes on and we turn on the relay, it is going to turn pin 30, the brake lights, into a turn signal light. If you enjoyed this video, I'm sure you're going to love my next one, and you'll love the videos in this playlist up here, which has way more wiring that I'm sure you're going to love. Please hit subscribe, ring the bell, and hopefully I'll see you on the next one.